Hey traders, Nick here after hours on Tuesday, just dissecting what happened today. So um, we're still reeling with the banking crisis, not banking crisis. Is it a small bank crisis? Is it a crypto bank crisis? So everybody's got opinions, right? But it looks like the big whooshes have happened already and they're trying to clear the air. So the the scoreboard was pretty green today. They didn't close out to highs. You're looking at the S&P, uh, 30 second chart, but just look at the overall um, price action. So we were up here and we closed here. And the rally to the close was insane, but we kind of saw it coming. Where it, and I'll walk you through it. So before the, the day started, this was yesterday, and I put a stick about this big saying that maybe tomorrow's reaction for the CPI would be that big. I kind of got it almost right, except I was a little bit off with the levels. So this was the actual stick that they created on the headline. So they hated it, they loved it, and they went in the middle and then bounced off the bottom and then they took off. They, they kind of overdid it. And then somewhere up here, I said there's downside pressure. And we lined up two trades, two shorts, one, two, and a third one from here to here, and a fourth one from here. And then another one saying, okay, if they lose this one, they go lower. And when they fell to here, I said, whoa, that's way too much. So we took a couple of longs. And I said, I thought that this would happen, that they would dip one more time, but the dip took it down to here. And there were reasons to enter here too long to explain. And then we had this huge squeeze to the close. And here's the thing, like somewhere in the middle of the morning, um, I placed a closing value on the SPX of 39.20. They closed on it within pennies. So the iron butterfly that somebody sold, they may have made $1,100 per contract on that one if they held it. Although I did tell them to close it early for partial gains. Um, so the iron condors worked and the iron butterfly worked. What does that mean? If you don't know iron, if you don't know credit spreads or what those mean, it means that the price action was predictable and they closed in the middle of a predictable range. And that's the good news. It's not the fact that the markets were up. The fact that it was a predictable range. I'm happier with that than to have the market be up. So in spite of me being bullish, usually, not all the time, just when the charts warrant it, we did catch more bearish bets than bullish ones today. The iron condors are neutral. The iron butterfly is neutral. They both won. And the puts won also three or four times, and the calls won maybe once or twice. So, and the fact that the S&P futures closed where, where they were, it puts me inside of a box where I need more upside by the end of the week in order to feel comfortable with the fact that the worst of it has happened. Um, the the shakeout from last Thursday's quote banking crisis that we had. All right, so we're coming up on a um, Fed event come soon. So the problem with those is the outcomes are binary. So we don't know what he's going to say and do, and we don't know how the markets will take it. Finally, we've been very critical of the Fed, especially by we, I mean me. Uh, I've called him names. He's definitely not an idiot, but he's doing idiotic things. But that's neither here nor there. So now finally, the rest of the world is starting to put the blame on him. It's like, dude, since the 2008 crisis, we haven't had a major bank fail. And on your watch, you caused the 16th largest and I don't know, another top 20, forgot the other one's name, also fail. So what gives? So now they're calling for no hike and some people are calling for rate cuts. Now rate cuts, I think, are not warranted. Why do we need to cut rates? We don't have a crisis yet. But at least stop what you're doing to figure out whether you caused a breakage or something. Um, so last week he said he's going to go back to raising faster, which is pretty crazy. So let's review. He decided to raise rates and then he decided that, oops, we need to raise them longer but lower. So he dialed it back from three quarters to a quarter. And then last week he said, wait, I may nudge him back up to raise faster. Okay, and now they want him to not raise or cut? I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, can we stop doing anything? It's better to do nothing. And here's what I know. I know that inflation is not getting worse around me. I know inflation is not getting that much better. I mean, some things are cheaper. Cars are a little bit cheaper because there are fewer buyers. Uh, but houses are a little bit cheaper or at least less bid. So he destroyed demand like he was trying to. So there's no need to do anything much 
drastic, you can stand to not do anything for a little bit and figure out what the hell's going on. Anyway, so what he says in his next meeting, I don't know. What he decides to say going forward, I don't know. How the markets will take it, I don't know. Here's what I know other than the inflation part. The PNL are still okay. They're not great from the companies. They're still okay. And we still have a low, a higher low, and we're working on establishing a higher low still. So if we hold, if we establish the fact that this low was the lowest low, then we can inch back up and eventually hold another higher low and take it, tackle this. So the bulls still have a path to the breakout they've been seeking as long as they hold the support. This is about the 50% rally from here to here. So this is the October rally. I keep revisiting that point because it's pretty important. This is a clump of support with support below it and below it and below it. Now, if we lose this one, we threaten to test that one. We don't want that. Um, there will be sellers at 400 SPY and 408 SPY. I'm rounding and 419 or whatever that value is, SPY. There will be sellers at every step of the way. As long as we maintain support, that will give the buyers time to tackle those sellers. All right, we still don't know if this is a banking crisis. I'm still open to it. The fact that crypto is bid so hard tells me that risk appetite is alive and well. I believe Bitcoin went well over 26,000 today. That's Bitcoin in front of us. I am long Bito. For, uh, Bito is a Bitcoin ticker that you can trade in your regular charts, regular accounts. I'm long from 11 for the group, and it was as high as 16 today. I'm not closing. So I'm looking for the gap fill to 19 and to 25, maybe even higher. So whether it gets there or not, I don't know. It was an $11 per share bet. I'm willing to risk it. All right. This was a quick update on the action in the S&P for uh, today, which is what, 314.